Demand is back. Germany's IFO Institute says the barometer of business confidence in the German auto sector is at its highest since August 2018. And automakers in the United States reported higher second quarter sales as they start to shrink their inventories. Meanwhile, retailers in Germany are starting to reap the benefits of the easing of lockdown measures. But things are problematic on the supply side and supply chains are still struggling with the ripple effects of the global pandemic. German Exporters Association says stoppages at the Yantian port in the southern Chinese trade hub of Shenzhen will lead to higher prices. There's even a shortage of sailors. There's a lot of work to be done at the Indian port city of Chennai. Containers full of cell phones, clothing, chips and car parts are waiting to be loaded. But things are quiet here. Many ships can't set sail. They can't find enough sailors. Countries such as Singapore, China and the United Arab Emirates aren't allowing Indian sailors to come ashore for fear of spreading the Delta variant. That means crews can't be changed out. Many shipping companies have fired their Indian employees. With a lack of alternatives, many have looked for different jobs or have gone into business for themselves, like this shop owner. The pandemic hit us sailors pretty hard. I lost my job as a seaman 14 months ago. During that time, I had no income, and it was difficult to find another job. I was turned down again and again. Now my situation has improved a little since I opened this store. There are almost 240,000 seafarers in India. 15% of the world's sailors come from the Asian country. Shipping companies are eager to employ them again. They've asked the Indian government to prioritize seafarers for vaccination. But the lack of vaccines is slowing down the immunization of sailors, and that, in turn, slows down the flow of global trade. For more on this, let's bring in Maria de Mertes, Deputy Director at the Bruegel Institute, a Brussels-based think tank. Welcome back to DW, Maria. Um, so it's not only materials that are in uh, short supply here, like chips, computer chips, steel, wood, synthetic materials. We also see a shortage of sailors. Where do you see the biggest risk right now? Well, I mean, I think it's important to try and understand what of this, of the thing that we observe, the backlog, is temporary, what may be a little bit more permanent, because I think that will make a big difference for the ability of the economies to return to, let's call it, a normal. So I think what happened with the pandemic was that a shift of demand, not only a drop in demand, but a shift of demand. We went away from buying clothes to buying things like electronics. So there is a, a massive demand for electronics that is creating a backlog and is basically blocking the system that is still needed to work itself through. Uh, that, I think, is temporary. Uh, you know, as we are opening up the economies and the rhythm at which we're opening the economies is also going to determine the speed at which we can adjust for this. So time is at the essence here. I think their biggest risk in this respect is some inflation. We are going to see, and in fact, we are seeing uh, both in the US and in the EU, uh, inflation going up. Uh, my sense is that all of this is temporary and it will dissipate as the supply chains are adapting and therefore and the demand is going back to a pattern that is a lot more evenly distributed. Speaking of uh, adopting new methods in supply chains, some economists say uh, the ripple effects of the pandemic, like strained supply chains, will lead to relocalizing production, having to rely less on long supply chains. Do you agree? Indeed, I think that is one long-term risk of the permanent nature is exactly this. There is a lot of talk on and try and uh, what they call robustifying uh, the supply chains, make them more resilient. Therefore, you don't depend on productions that are very far geographically from the point where things are being sold. That implies shortening the supply chain. So there is a very serious talk about that. Um, I think the trade-off here is that uh, what this will mean in terms of costs. So I think the calculation that will be done in the future is, you know, the resilience that we want to improve at against what is this going to cost us. I think this discussion is not over yet, but I certainly see uh, this one, this, this being one of the most important risks as we move forward. Uh, the issues that we're looking at uh, right now, the problems on the supply uh, side and the problems in the supply chain, are they uh, going to choke off the economy's uh, recovery here? 
I don't think so. I don't think it's going to make any difference on the ability to grow. Remember, demand is coming up very strongly, actually, both uh, in Europe and the US. I think what it will imply is inflationary pressures um, and policy responses to try and tame these uh, uh, inflationary pressures. I don't think uh, uh, this is a real risk in terms of growth, uh, but it is in terms of uh, inflation, and a lot is being said on this. Maria de Mertes of the Bruegel Institute in Brussels, thank you for your thoughts.